So after the partially digested food, known as chyme, exits the stomach, it enters into the small intestine. So the small intestine extends from the pylorus of the stomach all the way to the cecum, which is this little pouch um, at, at the beginning of the large intestine. So it's this little bit here. So I'll just isolate the small intestine by fading away the large intestine. And you can see how it's this long convoluted tube. And the its small intestine consists of three parts. The first part is known as the duodenum, and it's this short little C-shaped part here. And then you've got the second part called the jejunum, and the distal part is called the ileum. So it's not really important to um, clearly mark out the jejunum and the uh, the ileum, but you just need to know that the jejunum makes up the the second part of the small intestine, and the ileum makes up the the distal part, so the third part of the small intestine. So the jejunum roughly lies in the left upper quadrant and the ileum roughly lies in the right lower quadrant and it makes up the distal three-fifths whereas the jejunum makes up the proximal two-fifths. But the duodenum is this first part and it's this C-shaped part which emerges at the um, at the end of the stomach, at the pylorus of the stomach, um, and it curves round the head of the pancreas. So the pancreas is one of these three accessory organs of digestion that I mentioned um, in the first part of this tutorial. So this, this organ sits behind the stomach, as you can see here. So if I just fade away the other organs, you can see, see the pancreas, um, and you can see how it sits um, in this C-shaped part of the duodenum. So the head of the pancreas nests itself into this curve of the duodenum. So you've got um, ducts from the pancreas and, uh, and ducts from the gallbladder which open up into the, into the duodenum. So this allows bile from the gallbladder and pancreatic secretions from the pancreas to enter into the duodenum and uh, this helps in digestion. So the gallbladder is this little structure here um, which sits underneath the liver. So if you remember that triangular shaped liver which sat um, on the right side and covered a bit of the stomach. So the duodenum ends at about this point uh, where it there then becomes the jejunum. Um, so the jejunum forms the proximal two-fifths of the small intestine and then the distal, so the, the last three-fifths, are called the ileum. So as you can see, the, the small intestine is highly convoluted. There's all these folds and it's really long and folded. Um, so this re really serves to increase the surface area. So it helps by having a larger surface area, there's much more possibility for absorption. So the small intestine is a major site for chemical digestion and absorption. And as I uh, showed you just now, um, the duodenum receives bile and pancreatic secretions to help with this chemical digestion. So as I told you before, the small intestine starts at the pylorus of the stomach and it ends at the cecum. So the cecum is this little pouch and it marks the beginning of the large intestine. So the large intestine lies around the edges of the abdominal cavity. So, so you can see its sort of relation to the skin there. So the function of the large intestine is to absorb water. So first you've got this cecum, which I showed you. So it's this little pouch here. And this is where the ileum joins the large intestine. And at this junction between the, the end of the ileum and the cecum, you've got the ileocecal valve. And just below, you can see this little worm-like structure. And this is called the vermiform appendix. So vermiform in Latin just means worm-shaped. Uh, worm so 
it kind of looks like a little earthworm. So this is the appendix. And then the colon is separated into four parts. You've got the ascending colon, which is this first part on the right, which ascends. And then you've got the transverse colon, um, which runs horizontally, so it's called the transverse colon. And then you've got the descending colon, which descends down into the last part called the sigmoid colon, which is this kind of curved part of the colon. So the sigmoid uh, colon gets its name because it's kind of S-shaped. So the Greek symbol sigma is uh, the letter S, so it's kind of S-shaped. So that's the sigmoid colon. So where the um, ascending colon meets the transverse colon, there's this kind of uh, bend. So these bends are called flexures. So the liver sits over this right side. So this bend is given the name the hepatic flexure. So hepatic referring to the liver. And on the right, uh, sorry, the left side, you've got this other bend where the transverse colon meets the descending colon. And this is called the splenic flexure because this is uh, where the spleen lies on the left side. So you can see that here with the liver and the spleen. So the hepatic flexure and the splenic flexure. So after the colon, after the sigmoid colon, you've got the rectum and then you've got the anal canal and the anus right at the end. So the, the rectum serves as a sort of temporary holding site for feces um, and then the feces ex is uh, expelled out through the rectum into the anal ca canal and then it, it exits the body through the anus. So intra-abdominal pressure is increased to uh, force out the feces from the rectum and into the anal canal and finally out of the um, anus. So the anus is the, the opposite end of the mouth, it's the exit of the digestive tract.